Videographers all know that having the most expensive top of the line equipment can change your editing workflow from this to something more like this. But what if this seamless workflow could be achieved without having to fork out thousands of dollars on the newest supercomputer? I'm starting to believe this future may be possible and it's all because of remote desktop technology. Now this technology isn't anything new. I mean, I actually remember my dad using this for work almost 10 years ago now. But it was when a friend of mine suggested that this could be used for editing that I really started to consider the possibilities. Your laptop suddenly doesn't need to be an expensive laptop at all. All the processing power would be happening on a different computer that's far more capable than anything you could have afforded on your own. And that way you'd actually be saving a lot of money using a remote computer. I don't know, maybe you'd have to pay a subscription fee or something of that nature, but I'll let a tech entrepreneur figure out the details of the business model. Initially, I thought that the only problem with this is that the internet wasn't exactly there yet. I mean, my fellow Aussies know that three years ago, we were struggling to get NBN and 20 megabytes per second. But here I am, working for a media company. We moved into a new office, and then this happened. Shit, I don't think I've ever seen internet this fast. Now it's at this point that I have two thoughts. My first thought was, damn, I might not have to ever deal with YouTube buffering again. But my second thought was, maybe technology has come far enough to support remote desktops full potential. So this is Daniel, and he plays video games a lot more than I do, and he actually had some really interesting input on this discussion about remote desktop. Have you had any issues with it? Like anything that's been like a problem with it? Yeah, it was like graphics and all that. Like graphics and everything were actually looked really good. Loading times were very impressive, but latency was the biggest issue. And although it's only a few milliseconds, when playing video games, it's very noticeable. So that was the biggest issue, like graphics and all that. And booting up games was very seamless. So this confirms that the internet and the latency is one of the biggest hurdles to overcome. But surely a 16 billion dollar company like Xbox has a pretty good chance at making some advancements in this field. Now I'm pretty convinced that this is a genius new way of editing, but I wanted to try the concept out for myself. I set up a remote connection between my Mac Pro and my much more powerful Mac Mini using the mind-bogglingly fast internet at work and my more Aussie average internet at home. My task is going to be to edit a simple real estate video. And the reason I did this is because a real estate video involves a lot of simple but commonly used techniques like tracking, file sorting, audio editing and all that kind of stuff. All the processing power was taking place at my computer at work, where it had After Effects open, Premiere open, and all my hard drives connected to it. And my laptop was literally just here, streaming. So here's what I found most notable about this experiment, and we're going to start with the good first. So I think my favourite part was that I was able to access all my files from everywhere. I even had a revision that I had to do urgently, and because of the software that I was using, I was actually able to do it on my phone. Which leads me to my second point, which is that I don't have to carry my hard drives with me anymore. All my hard drives are safely stored and connected to my computer at work, and I can access them anytime as long as I have internet. And I think the most important point is that I was able to use my otherwise not really capable laptop to edit videos. Now let's move on to the problems with it. So I think the first problem, which is kind of an important one, is the issue of latency. So even though I had high upload speed at work, there was still a minuscule amount of delay when I was editing from my laptop. And this was mildly frustrating because when you're editing, you like to do it fast paced and you need to have the software responding fast. 
fast. And it just wasn't always doing that. Another problem that I found is that when I was doing tracking in After Effects, sometimes the cursor wouldn't always be accurate. But realistically, this can be fixed with a software update. Where are we today? And what do we need for this to become a superior editing method? I still use this almost every day. I find it useful to be able to make revisions, upload, check some things from home, and take advantage of a bit of work from home flexibility. Of course, right now, without crazy good internet on both sides, there's definitely enough latency to keep me going into work every day for those bigger editing projects. I still think that this technology is going places, and with a few more internet upgrades, I think remote desktops could be a great way to save us videographers the cost of buying super expensive equipment all the time. But let me know, what do you think? Can you see yourself using a remote connection to edit a video?